properties of rational exponents. There will be fractions, but we're going to go over the rules of exponents just first off. And these aren't the same way your form quiz is written. They use, they use a lot of X's and some other letters. But X to the A times X to the B, what do you do with A and B? You add them. It's X to the A plus B. Use this one a lot on six one homework. Thanks to the AB. How about two things both raised to the X? AX to the X. Raise the X to the X. We give that X point to both pieces. Then you have the good old X to the negative A. One over X to the A. One over X to the A. Allows us to make the X point positive. Now, this is written a lot differently on your form quiz. On your form quiz, I probably have something like x to the b over r. This is the lesson I taught Friday. It's, um, what root? Oh, b. Um, well, I rewrote it to be x to the b over r. What root are you going to take of that x? Arth. Take the arth oh, yeah. root of x. What's the power on that x? B. That's how I read what it is over our kids. Power, root. Now, if you did that homework properly on the front, most likely you didn't use write it like that. Yeah, use the princes, because it's easier to do that in your head. That's the one I use most of the time. That's what I use. Oh, yeah, it's easier to take the square root of the 16 as opposed to the square root of 16 cubed. Uh, there's A over B to the X. It's kind of like uh, the third example. A X over B X. There's one that's missing. It's actually, you would think it would be the one that everybody would get on a formula quiz. No. You want to know what's missing? Uh, no. X to the zero. Which is what? One. One. It is not zero, it's not two, it's not Bob, it's one. Anything to the zero, yeah. One of your last quizzes was smiley face to the zero. Yeah, he said red. Somebody still missed it. It doesn't matter if it's a All right, simplification. We're not supposed to type these in a calculator, we're just supposed to rewrite them. As a single thing with one exponent. Now this is multiplication. What are we supposed to do with the exponential space? We're supposed to add it. So up high, I'm thinking a quarter plus a half. <coughs> Notice that's up high. It's a superscript. It's not a script on the same level as seven. It's not a subscript down low. It's a brick and superscript up high. It is three quarters. Now most of you guys can't add fractions together. No shame. But a quarter plus a half is three quarters. You can't do it, you just have to use the IE4. You want to know how to add fractions? Go on IXL, do the fifth grade math on IXL without a calculator in front of you, you'll figure out how to add fractions. All right, here we have six to the one half power times four to the one third power all squared. Nope. No, 24. Are 6 and 4 alike? They're numbers. They're not the same numbers. Really can't do a whole lot with it. Maybe when something works out, the way out will be all right. But you can take that there list. So I double the half. I double the third. Six times four to the two over three. Now, Sam, you want to say it's twenty-four to the two thirds? Yeah, you guys. Well, we're gonna we're gonna say that because he, he thought about it. Sam, because he thought six times four is twenty-four, right? Sam thinks twenty-four to the two thirds. This is worth talking about because you're not alone. A lot of kids think you can do little things like that. You don't have a rule that says you can. So you make up your own rules based on what you think might make sense. 
So the actual correct phrase is six times four to the two thirds. Now, if I'm curious about something and I have these wonderful calculators in front of me, I just type it in and see if I'm right. That's the correct decimal, 15.1 something, okay? 24 to the two-thirds is not the same thing. In order to add exponents, they have to truly be alike. In order to put them together, they have to truly be alike. And 6 and 4, while they're both numbers, are not truly alike. So, sorry, Sam. You and whoever else is thinking that there's more than you is wrong. Now, C is actually kind of interesting in that they both have the same exponent. C actually is a rule. They both have the same exponent. You have... Uh, you have a, b, and the x, right? That's a, x, b, x. That's actually a rule. This is one of those rare cases where you can multiply numbers together. But it would work its way out anyways. It would actually work. You could actually say that this is 12 to the fifth power. But like I said, it's going to work its way out, and you have to know it's a rule. I'm not even going to follow it. I'll do exactly like it is on b. Focus on that high exponent, that negative one-fifth power. What are we supposed to do with that negative one-fifth power? Distributive. What's four, or sorry, what's five times negative one-fifth? Negative one. It's four to the negative first times three to the negative first. Now both those guys have negative exponents. Where do they actually belong? Down to the denominator. And when you move that negative exponent down to the bottom, what happens to it? Changes. Comes positive. It's also understood. It's really 1 over 4 times 3, which is 112. I'm not going to do the, but what's the understood exponent? Uh, I'll do the, e is uh, 42 to the 1 third over 6 to the 1 third power. Now, this is one of those things that you could actually apply rules to. I mean, exponents are the same. You can work with the numbers themselves. You can. You can do 42 over 6 and say it's 7. Or you could not worry about it. I don't know. I don't care. And it should be 2. Then not. But I'm going to reduce this one down. Because these exponents match in a lot of these things. 42 over 6 is going to be a 7 to the 1 thing. And what's left to be done with it? Square it. Square it. What is 7 to the 1 third power squared? 7 to the 2 thirds. We multiply that exponential space together. So, yeah, there's fractions. Big deal. Anybody any questions? Anything we did? Other than some numbers and they just don't make sense to you? I'm looking at you. I was looking in your direction. All right, properties of radicals. These are break apart rules. Let's deal with simplification. If you have a radical and you can break the interior into the product of two things, then you can break it into just different radicals. The nth root of some a times b is the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Same deal with fractions, and I've been over these things with square roots. The nth root of a over b is the nth root of a over the nth root of b. And I have two examples off of the side. I've got the 4th root of 27 times the 4th root of 3. Those are both 4th roots. What am I allowed to do? To reverse the rule I wrote, 4 through 27 times 3. What is 27 times 3? 1. Now, were you able to take the 4 through that single 27? No. Were you able to take the 4 through 3? No. 
Oh, I mean, you go to your calculator and that's the one fourth of your decimal. But you can take 4381, right? What's 4381? Exactly, you're not here. You're never here. Ever. That's 4381, kids. Three. Three times, three times, three times, three times, three times. Five and one, two, three. I'm not selling for X, so don't worry about plus or minus. It could also be negative three, though, could it? The negative times itself four times, really positive. All right, uh, here's another example. Cube root of 250 over cube root of 2. I can't take the cube root of 250. It doesn't exist. I can't take the cube root of 2. It, doesn't, it does exist. It's what we call rational. But maybe if I manipulate a little bit and do what the rule suggests I do, you trying to give me a final answer? I can rewrite it like that. Now, if you don't know the cube rule 125, you haven't done a little bit of my homework. It's going to copy somebody else's. Because at this point in the game, you've been asked to take cube 125 at least 100 times. What is it? Five. Like, you're not doing your work. Somebody else is doing your work. You're copying, taking credit for it, because you're just a liar, liar. Hands on fire. It's not your stuff. There's a reason you don't know anything. If you don't do anything, you never know anything. Well, that works, kids. I guess your goal is to get a 70. Ah, more simplification. Is it equal to anything? Those little shortcut rules you use in algebra, they always have equals zero. Because you can do anything to zero and still be what? Zero. So there's no equality symbol. You're asked to simplify the cubic root of 135. So what you need to have some idea is, to do part A, is you need to know things you can take cube roots of. So what are some numbers you can take cube roots of? Toots, I almost wrote toots. What's the, what's the smallest number you can take the cubic root of? One. The cubic root of one is? What's the next smallest number you can take the cubic root of? Eight, that's two times two times two. What's the next smallest number? 27. That's three times three times three. Next smallest number? 64. Four times four times four. Next smallest number, 125. 216. Just goes like that. 289 is the next one. Anyways, there's enough of a list. But the idea here is when you see a cubic root asking to simplify, you think about what might enter it. Now, 125 ain't going to enter it. 64 is not going to enter it. Maybe 27 does. Five times. So I break the radical apart. 135 is how many 27s? It's 5 27s. Just like some fun square roots kids. What is the cubic root of 27? 3. So 3 cubic roots of what's left over? 5. Maybe it won't be too bad. B has to do with the idea of you're not supposed to have radicals in the denominator. It's kind of the big deal of it. And these aren't square roots either, so you can't just kind of get away with the old trick that you used to do. A lot of kids who think they know something, and what they'll do is they'll say, well, can I just multiply the top and bottom by the fifth or whatever? If you had like 1 over square root of 3, would you multiply top and bottom by root of 3? 
say, okay, root 3 over root 3. And they give you root 3 over 3. It doesn't work on these. You take a fifth root of 8, and you multiply it by a fifth root of 8, you end up with a fifth root of 64. I actually might work on this one. Let's see, 2 cubes, what, 8? Fourth is 16, fifth is 16. Can't take the fifth root of 64, can you? Nope. What you need to be doing is you need to figure out what you have to multiply so that you take the fifth root of 8 and fifth. So on these weird ones, at least on this example, we multiply top and bottom so that we are taking the fifth root of 8 to the fifth power. Because I can take the fifth root of 8 to the fifth without any brain effort whatsoever. I can. What is the fifth root of 8 to the fifth? 8. Five's cancel. <clears throat> so, what do you have to multiply 8 by to become 8 to the fifth? What would you multiply x by to become x to the fifth? Multiply by, you think about x is x times what is x to the fifth? X to the fourth. What do you multiply 8 by to become 8 to the fifth? 8 to the fourth. Well, they're a little tricky if you don't like exponents. So we got the fifth root of 8 down low. We're going to multiply it by the fifth root of 8 to the fourth. Now the top, once you do the bottom, you got to do the top. So the numerator and the denominator both multiplied by 8 to the fourth. All right, the fifth root of 8 to the fourth. And the bottom piece is going to become something easy to work with. It's going to become the fifth root of 8 to the fifth. The top part is a pair. I don't know why I wrote fifth root of eight to the fourth. It's eight to the fifth now, isn't it? Okay. The top part's a pain in the butt. I don't have enough paper to write out all my thought processes here. The top part is seven times eight to the fourth power. So the fifth root of this number. Fifth root of 28,672. You probably sent the price for this. The bottom is just eight. Fifth root of eight to the fifth is eight. I need to run through a list of things that I can take the fifth root of. And it's actually not hard to do. You just kind of start small. Like maybe you try and figure out what two to the fifth is. If you don't know it, two to the fifth is thirty-two. And I see if that big, huge number I got is divisible by 32. So I take my 28,762, and I divide it by 32. I heard none of that. Is that a nice number? No. So I bump it up a little bit, and I didn't even type it in right. It doesn't matter if there's a decimal. If there's a decimal, you don't get to use it. So, okay, so 2 to the 5th doesn't work. I got 896, you sure? Yeah, 28762. Oh, it's my bad. Two eight six seven two. I wrote it on the board wrong. There's the problem. 
to the fourth. So anyways, you guys got a decimal of 2 to the 5th, right? Well, see if it's divisible by 3 to the 5th. You don't have to figure out what 3 to the 5th is. You just type in 3 to the 5th. Doesn't work. What might be next? 4 to the 5th. But you get 28. I'm, I keep typing it in wrong, don't I? What is wrong with me today? Y'all are wearing off on me. That happens. Ah, there it is. That's what I'm looking for. That five digit number is nothing more than 4 to the 5th times 28. So I'm 5th root. Four to the fifth times twenty-eight. Can you take the fifth root of that four to the fifth? It's four. You need to understand that. You don't. It's time to be over and you know get that wax out of here or something. The fifth root of anything with fifth power is the number itself. So all that to get four fifth root of twenty-eight over eight. And if you make it this far, you're a dumb smart kid. If you don't take it one step farther, don't be a dumb smart kid. Just be a smart kid. It's, it's a half, right? Four over eight. Don't stop there. There was some homework a month ago that y'all were leaving like square root of one as an answer. Once, fifth root of 28 over two when everything's said and done. Back when we first started talking about imaginary numbers, you would leave things like square root of one. Don't leave things like that. Six minutes. What else we got to do? Quite a bit, actually. All right. Adding and subtracting radicals and roots. This is about like terms. Is the fourth root of 10 a lot like the seven times the fourth root of 10? They are alike. How many roots, fourth roots of 10s do you actually have? Eight. It's like terms, kids. 1 4 through 10 plus 7 4 through 10 is 8 4 through 10. Now, this is using exponential form. Big deal. I have 2 fifth roots of 8 plus 10 fifth roots of 8. All right? I'm converting from exponential form into radical form to say it. How many 8, sorry, fifth roots of 8 do I have? Hold on. 12 times 8 to one fifth. Like terms. Are you allowed to multiply 12 and 8 together? Didn't Sam try that earlier? Yeah. Was Sam right or wrong? Yeah. Or in T84, he was wrong. T84 is pretty good at working on numbers. Can't do it. C might look like there's nothing alike on it, but they are very similar. The cube roots, but you can't just say the cube root of 52. That doesn't make a little sense. You have a rule about adding or subtracting. They have to be alike. They're not alike. One's 54, one's two. Simplify the radical. What's the number of 154? Then you can take the cubic root of. Well, seven. It's the cube root of 27 twos minus the cube root of two. What is the cube root of that 27? Three cubic roots of two minus a single cubic root of two. How many cubic roots of two do you have? Two. Two of them. Four minutes. Skip two slides down the second slide. Skip that one. And 
You did some of this stuff in Algebra 1. I know you did. I'm going to do A the long way and the short way. If I saw a fifth root, what I would do, and this is how I do it in my head still to this day, is I would break things down to the top of that fifth root. Like A to the A is A to the fifth times A cubed. You guys see that? B to the 14 is a B to the fifth, B to the fifth, B to what column? Fourth. And C to the fifth is obviously C to the fifth. And I would take the roots of each of those pieces after I do a break part rule. Now, can you take the fifth root of four? No. You try, it's going to be a long gesture. So it stays in the radical. Can you take the fifth root of A to the fifth? Yeah. You can. What is the fifth root of A to the fifth? Hey. Can you take the fifth root of B to the fifth? B. But there's another one. So another what? Another B. Can you take the fifth root of B to the fourth? Can you take the fifth root of C to the fifth? Yes, C. Let's see. I had an A cube left over. And I had a B to the fourth left over. So I have A, B, B, C. But what's B times B? A, B squared. A, B squared, C, fifth roots, 4, A, Q, B, and 4. Now there is a shortcut to this. 3 times 5 and 8. What's with a remainder of 3? Three times five and fourteen. Twice with the remainder of four. There's a shortcut to that, isn't it? Oh. And I'm done. Enjoy that homework. It's usually a rough one. <laughs>